Hey, House Republicans voted on an anti-abortion bill that was not the bill they planned to vote on when Republicans lost the support of some Republican women in the House of Representatives for a bill that would restrict abortions to the first 20 week, weeks of pregnancy instead of 24 weeks under Roe versus Wade. Republican leadership surrendered to those Republican women and had to come up with some other symbolic vote on abortion today, which is the 42nd anniversary of the Roe versus Wade decision. Abortion opponent and former presidential candidate Rick Santorum was disappointed. I'm sure the leadership is looking at the situation and uh, the most important thing you want to do is you want to have a bill that can pass. We're disappointed that it sounds like uh, several members were concerned about uh, this bill. Republicans did manage to pass a bill today that they say would prevent federal dollars from funding abortions, but of course, federal funding of abortion has been illegal since the Hyde Amendment passed in 1976. There is virtually no possibility of this new bill passing the Senate, but if by some legislative miracle it does make it to the president's desk, President Obama has said that he would veto it. Joining me now is Dana Milbank, a columnist for the Washington Post, and Elise Hogue, president of NARAL Pro-Choice America. Uh, Elise, uh, were you surprised at this review? Vault of, of basically women Republicans in the House of Representatives. Were you aware that they they were not going to be willing to go along uh, with supporting this 20-week uh, restriction on abortion? Well, we see it as an indication of a changed political reality. I mean, it's important to remember that Renee Elmers, who sort of led the defections of the GOP women, voted for this exact same bill in the last session. I think what this, uh, what some in the party are coming to recognize is their obsession with outlawing abortion at the expense of real Americans' priorities. It's not good policy. And it's not good politics. It hurts women and families, and it hurts their chances of moving forward into a brave new world. And uh, Dana Milbank, they couldn't get the vote they wanted, so they uh, went for another vote and uh, in, in, in somehow pretending uh, in, in that vote that there is federal funding for abortion. <laughs> Well, they did that, and they, it seems that they didn't quite get the, the overall point here, and that is, uh, you know, they just uh, won an election by talking about, you know, the economy, health care, uh, immigration, anything but abortion, which was not on voters' minds at all, is registering uh, as a, an important issue with less than half of 1%, and so they really had to make this one of their top priorities uh, in their first two weeks here. So uh, the, the fact that they uh, basically switched to another bill, sort of laid bare, uh, the whole notion that they were doing this uh, just to cater to the uh, the people who come for this uh, annual trade show known as the uh, the, uh, the March for Life. So uh, it, it was a case of sort of bait and switch, saying elect us uh, and we're going to do things for jobs. And instead, uh, they, these new majorities got elected and they're going back to the same old culture wars. And uh, Elise, uh, there is a, a very clear and strong majority support in this country uh, for basically the structure of Roe versus Wade, a, a woman's right to choose. Uh, Republicans know that they are that they, in political terms, they're playing against that majority, and so they they kind of like to get. I, I've always believed they like to get these votes done in as quiet a way possible so that it pleases the people who are there to lobbying them literally you know in the building that day uh, but doesn't get quite this much notice out there in the po in the general population where the, where where this position is opposed Absolutely. I mean, we see support for the values enshrined in Roe v. Wade in seven in ten Americans. This crosses partisan lines. In fact, we released a poll yesterday that showed that in four Republican House districts, the majority were opposed to this bill, opposed to their elected officials voting on this bill. You know, I think Dana's point is really, really important. We watched Republican candidate after Republican candidate run away from their extreme anti-choice values in order to get elected in 2014, but it didn't last very long, right? It took two weeks for them to come back and focus on this obsession of restricting personal freedoms for women rather than expanding economic 
economic opportunity. And one of the things that was lost in the conversation about the bill they voted for today is it actually raises taxes on small businesses who provide comprehensive health care insurance for their employees because 87 percent of private insurance plans actually cover abortion. And this bill would actually raise taxes on small businesses, again, not in line with voters' priorities. And uh, Dana, the official position of the Republican Party in their presidential platform is uh, opposition to abortion with absolutely no exceptions, not for mm -hmm. rape, not for incest, not for uh, life of the mother. And that's a, a, a position supported at most by 12 percent of mm -hmm. Americans. And so uh, th these are the days where they, they, they like to be able to please that very tiny constituency, yeah. uh, but move away from it as quickly as possible. Well, and that's really what tripped them up here. It wasn't the 20-week the, the uh, uh, thing per se. It was that uh, it, it technically had a, a, a rape exception in there, but it was only if the, the woman reported it to the police, which, uh, which generally uh, doesn't occur. So that's the thing. Uh, that led to the uh, to the rebellion there. I mean, uh, the type of procedure involved here is something like uh, one percent uh, of all abortions, and they're sort of you know going against the uh, the general. For, forget about uh, uh, public opinion here. Uh, dramatic reductions in in the number of abortions. So the whole thing sounded awfully discordant. And yes, maybe they wanted to uh, uh, th uh, throw this uh, bone to the, the marchers here in town, and they wanted it not to be noticed. But it completely uh, blew up in their faces last night. Elise Hogue and Dana Milbank, thank you both very much for joining us.